Well, hello, and thank you to DSF for the opportunity to talk about the clinical presentation of Dravet syndrome. Here are my disclosures. In Dravet syndrome, a previously well and developmentally normal baby presents with their first seizure at a median age of six months. But if one looks at a large data set where it finds the youngest age they can present is six weeks up to 19 months of age. And here you see a little uh, baby I look after who's about eight months at this stage, but presenting with a classical seizure type seen in new onset Drave, which is a hemiclonic seizure, right hemiclonic seizure. But is this always the way? And we teach that people with Drave, babies with Drave syndrome present with febrile status with a hemiclonic seizure. When one looks at the data very carefully, one finds that just over half present with fever, but under 45% do not. And the median temperature is interestingly very low at 38.2 degrees Celsius with a range up high to 41. Interestingly, 3% of children with Dravet syndrome never have a seizure triggered by fever. So fever is not an absolute. Again, we teach that people present with a, a hemiclonic seizure, but indeed more than half present with a generalised tonic-clonic seizure and about a third with a hemiclonic seizure. And you can see that a low number present with myoclonic seizures, focal impaired awareness seizures, absence or multiple seizure types. What about the duration of the first seizure? Is it always status epilepticus? Well, the answer is only a third present with status epilepticus, but quite a number present with a longer seizure lasting more than five minutes. Equally, though, a quarter present with a brief seizure under five minutes. So a brief seizure without a fever doesn't mean it's not Drave syndrome. What about the second seizure type? When does that come along? Well, we found that out of 205 patients, the second seizure type began at a median of nine months, but could begin as early as three months in a child with earlier onset seizures, or as late as 25 years. And the third seizure type began at a median of 15 months, with a range of four months to eight years. The duration of the first five seizures was not always uh, status epilepticus. In fact, here you see the median durations of the first five seizure types, and you can see that by the fifth seizure, the median is down to five minutes, although some individuals continue to have status epilepticus defined as more than 30 minutes. What about the duration between the first five seizures? Well, we tend to think of it as about, about, about a month, which a median is, but look at this. The longest duration between the first and second seizure is 250 days. And similarly for the second of a third seizure, but then the, it narrows considerably to the third to fourth and fourth to fifth seizure of any type being a median of 21 and 24 days. And here you see some of the other seizure types that can occur in Dravet syndrome. And this is the first same baby I showed you a moment ago, a little bit older now. And she is having a focal impaired awareness seizure with loss of awareness, head and eye deviation to the right and some autonomic features. Here you see a 21 month old boy. Coaching yeah. stimulation triggers a cluster of myoclonic seizures. Good boy. Oh. There you see. He doesn't like it very much. And here you see another little boy with Dravet syndrome, and he has very frequent absence seizures with eyelid myoclonias. And you'll notice the um, eye flickering now, in just a second and the loss of head tone associated with that. 
Um, and he's still quite interactive, but there you see the very rapid eye flickering. Same little boy now, a year later, and he's also having the similar absence seizures with eyelid myoclonias, but now with quite a few myoclonic components and indeed some atonic features. So here you see all the other seizure types that can occur in children with Dravet syndrome. And um, you can see that 96% will have tonic-clonic seizures and about two-thirds hemiclonic myoclonic focal seizures. Just over half have absence and over 20% have tonic and atonic seizures. Interestingly, non-convulsive status occurs in a quarter of patients previously called obtundation status by the French, and convulsive status does not occur in all individuals, defined as 30 minutes, and it occurs in almost 90%. Now, what about the developmental cause? Well, these babies have normal development until one year of age, and then development slows or in some uh, patient actually regresses. They walk a little late, their language is slow, and they often regress with prolonged seizures. The outcome is sadly very poor, with 50% having severe intellectual disability, 30% moderate and 20% mild, and very rarely some individuals have normal development. The developmental course, we talk about it going off with plateauing or regression after about one year of age. But in our study of 205 patients, we found that 27% already showed delay prior to one year of age. And indeed, a few patients were never normal from the beginning. Uh, but you can see the majority uh, show slowing between two and three years of age, some not showing any regression until around five years. Uh, the median age of developmental slowing was 20 months. Now, what about examination findings? Well, they have physiological ataxia with a mean age of walking of 16 to 18 months. And this physiological ataxia persists for longer than is usual. As they grow older, they develop pyramidal signs. As they sort of go into puberty, you can detect them on examination. And they develop this characteristic crouch gait with flexion at the hip and uh, knee and bilateral plano abducto valgus at the feet. And this limits long dis distance walking for many of the uh, adults with Dravet syndrome. The EEG is normal in the first couple of years of life often, but not always. And then it shows generalized uh, spike wave or polyspike wave activity and often multifocal epileptiform discharges. And just to finish our little Dravet Drave puzzle, the cause is usually ge is genetic. And in more than 90% of children with Dravet syndrome, you find they have a, a mutation of the alpha-1 subunit of a sodium channel. You see it here em embedded in the cell membrane. And the alpha-1 subunit is the area which forms the sodium channel pore. Uh, and most, more than 90% of our patients with Dravet syndrome have a pathogenic variant in this part, in this particular gene. And this puzzle hopefully gives you a good uh, gestalt of what Dravet syndrome looks like and the key features that make up this distinctive syndrome. Now, some of the data I've shown you is derived from our recent study, and in this we have uh, provided you with an algorithm of uh, the points I've just made to help you when you see a patient to diagnose uh, Dravet syndrome. Thank you very much.